How to make union nuts and why. Union nuts for steam engine pipe connections are commercially available and usually inexpensive. I need some union nuts which have a thread that is 5 16 of an inch by 26 threads per inch. In this size they are generally quite costly and I only need a small quantity. That is why I am making some in my workshop. I am in the smaller of my two workshops and all the machining is taking place in the Myford ML7R leg. The first thing to do is to select a piece of brass hexagon that is exactly the same size as the nuts that I already have. I found the correct piece of brass in a tin in the workshop and here it is fitted in the chuck and I'm facing across the front of it. So now it's nice and flat at the front. The next part of the job is to use a centre drill to make a hole in the end of it. There was a bit of a dimple in the end of the bar from a previous operation but it's best to face across the front and start again. Then you know that the hole down the centre that you're drilling will be accurate. The next hole to be drilled needs to match the diameter of the shank of the union cone. In this case it is not 100%. It's just slightly tight on a union cone. This is an easy fix and I will show it later on in the video. The union cone that I'm currently showing is a PM Research union cone which is a slightly different angle to the ones that I normally use and it's also slightly smaller so it fits in the hole. I want the union nut that I'm making to match all the others and they have a bit of a recess like this at each end. So here I'm cutting the first recess and once this was turned to precisely the size that I wanted I took a note of the graduations on the hand wheel which in this instance was 3.5 3.5 watt it really doesn't matter as long as it's in the same area and says 3.5 on the hand wheel when I turn the other end of the union nut later on it will be exactly the same. The next job is to drill a tapping size hole part way down the piece of brass bar. I'm using two imperial drill sizes lower than 5 16 and this is a satisfactory tapping size for ME type threads. No science, no numbers, simply select a drill bit from your box of imperial drills that is two sizes down from 5 16 Or look at a chart and use a metric drill, the choice is yours. I'm rotating the chuck and therefore the work by hand and I'm threading it 5 16 by 26 threads per inch. It's a nice simple job, just take it easy. This union nut is made from brass so it doesn't offer much resistance to the tap. Simply wind in the tap, then slowly and carefully wind it out of the work and the job's complete. To finish this end, I'm rotating it in the chuck and using a file to clean up the end. I don't want it to be sharp. The part is full of swarf, so once you remove it from the chuck, tap it on the lathe or somewhere solid to get rid of all the bits and pieces. The next step is to part off the nut, but unfortunately for this small Myford I do not have a parting tool. I would normally do jobs like this on the Boxford lathe in the main workshop. It's just very convenient working on the one next to the kitchen because I can cook my dinner whilst I'm working. Instead of using a parting tool that I don't have, I use my small bandsaw to cut off the end, slightly bigger than I needed it to allow for a bit more turning. I'm being very careful not to remove too much metal at this stage and need plenty of thickness for the actual union nut to grip the union cone. And then I cut the recess with the hand wheel set to three and a half. So both ends of this union nut should be the same diameter. It is really important to make sure that both ends of these nuts look the same. If one of these recesses is a little bit longer than the other, it looks terrible. I finish the job as usual by removing sharp edges using a small file. When I looked at this union nut I did realise that the open end was a bit too deep so I machined a little bit off it to make it match the other end. And now I have a perfectly balanced union nut which is very important with these small and very visible parts. Once again I clean up the end with the file and it's now looking good. 
and here it is in position on the check valve of one of the 501 boilers. I will silver solder a piece of 532nd pipe into this union cone. I could end the video here but I'm going to make another one just in case you missed anything in the first part. This one though is going to be running at a much higher speed. All of the operations really are going quite fast here just to get through it quickly and make it less boring. I do not wish to be held responsible for any viewers slipping into a coma whilst watching my videos. The process is absolutely identical to the first union nut that I made, including removing the sharp ends with a file. What I'm doing here is deburring the hole in the union nut using the original drill that I drilled the hole with. And now it's top tip time. I'm actually going to use a different type of union cone and it's slightly bigger. So I'm just using a round needle file in the hole while spinning it in the chuck and this increases the diameter of the hole very slightly and now the union cone fits. I could have used a metric drill bit but my set of metric drill bits are up in the main workshop. Nevertheless using a round needle file did the trick and here is the union nut complete with union cone fitted to the steam tap and as shown earlier in the video the other union nut is fitted to the check valve on the other 501 boiler. And that is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.